Oh man, this video is gonna be great. I'm almost done with my script. Let's see, let's add this word, add this word, constitution. It's done. Happy Constitution Day! In this day in 1787, September 17th, our founding fathers signed the final draft of the U.S. Constitution. So in honor of Constitution Day, I like to present to you Constitution 101 with me, Mr. Bognot, in under 17 minutes. So before I go in depth taking a look at the U.S. Constitution, I want to take a look at the constitutional principles that the founding fathers had even before they started writing the Constitution. They want to ensure that these points were incorporated in the U.S. Constitution. And so what does this all mean? Well, popular sovereignty is a term that states that power is resided within the people, stating that government is not the supreme ruler, but the people are. If you don't like anyone in a position of government, you can vote them out. That is what popular sovereignty is all about. Power is resided within the people. Federalism is a system in which the national and state governments work together. National, state, county, city, special purpose districts, they all work together. It's not just one entity controlling everything. It's the federal and the state governments working together. Separation of powers means that power is not resided within just one body. It's separated in our country. We have the legislative branch, executive branch, and judicial branch. And those powers are separated for a reason so that we can have checks and balances, which is one of the next terms. Checks and balances means that each branch can check each other out to make sure that they're doing stuff that's constitutional. Judicial review is also a system in which our courts can take a look at things and laws and anything at all and check and see if they're constitutional and tell the government, hey, you know, this isn't right or this is wrong. And we're going to take a look at so many Supreme Court cases later on during this year. And limited government states that power is limited when it comes to people and government. And in our Constitution, it also states what politicians and government officials can do and what they can't do. And we'll go over every single bit of that later on in class. So without further ado, let's get started with uh, the Constitution. Do, do, do some fresh OJ to start off the day. Oh, hey, I didn't see you all there. Let's start off by going over the main parts of the U.S. Constitution. There are three main parts, preamble, articles, and amendments. But there's also a secret fourth part. Yes, so P, A, A, and W. Preamble, articles, amendments, W. W stands for, wow, you'll be a constitution expert by the end of this video. So remember, PAW, P-A-A-W, preamble, article, amendment, and wow, you'll be a constitution expert by the end of this video. <sighs> hello, hello, is preamble there? Oh, hey there. So the preamble, the preamble is essentially the introductory paragraph to the document that we're talking about, the Constitution. The preamble outlines all the goals of the document and it starts off with the following words you might recall. We the people. We the people of the United States of America, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Alrighty, so now we're gonna take a look at the articles of the US Constitution. There's seven of them, hence why there's seven empty slots here in my Connect Four game. And we're gonna fill it in as we go. And so we have seven articles. You might be telling yourselves right now, wow, that's a lot of articles. Well, it really isn't. Consider articles like chapters in a book and we'll go one by one. And so first things first, you always have to remember the following phrase. Lucas eats jalapeno steaks and Spanish rice. Lucas eats jalapeno steaks and Spanish rice. You might be asking yourselves, what the heck does that mean? Well, if you take the first letter out of that phrase, each letter, there should be seven at that point, you have all seven articles of the US Constitution. So let's take a look. So Lucas, L, L stands for legislative branch. Article one is all about the legislative branch. Talks about everything that Congress can do, what Congress can't do, talks about qualifications to be a part of the House and the Senate, you name it. Article one is the longest article in the Constitution, and some might argue that that was purposefully done. Is that considered the most important branch in the United States? Stay tuned in class. Alrighty, so that's L, Lucas, E, eats. Second article is the executive branch. Yes, the executive branch. It states the qualifications of a president. It states what the president can and can't do and everything involving the executive branch. All righty, Lucas eats, jalapeno. Third article, J, jalapeno. 
judicial branch. Yes, the third article is all about the judicial branch. It talks about our court system, the Supreme Court. It talks about how the federal government can create inferior courts, which we have done in the 200 years that have passed since the Constitution has been written. And that is the third article. So as you can see here, the first article, legislative, second article, executive, third article, judicial. The first three branches of government. Those are the first three articles. Fourth article, states, states, stakes. Sounds about the same. Lucas eats jalapeno steaks, states. This article, the fourth article, is all about the relation of the United States, each individual state, to the country as a whole. It also partly talks about federalism, which we'll talk about in class later on. So that is the fourth article of the Constitution. Fifth article of the Constitution, A and, and, all right, A, amendment process. You know, we've all talked about recently how the Constitution was an imperfect document to begin with. And so we can change the Constitution. And the fifth article, A, outlines the amendment process, how to change the United States Constitution. Alrighty, sixth article, Spanish, S, the second S. S stands for supremacy, right? Supremacy, supremacy means one is over another. So what this means in the US Constitution is that any law within the states cannot go against any law that's federal. So for example, Federal law now states that gay marriage is legal throughout the entire country, and every state must recognize it. No state can create a state law that states, oh, no, we're not recognizing it, because that goes against federal law. So S, Spanish, stands for supremacy, stands for the supremacy clause, that the federal laws are above state laws. And finally, the seventh article, okay, Rice, R, Rice, R, seventh article, R, ratification, ratification. And so ratification means how is this constitution going to be the supreme law of the land? Shortest article in the US Constitution essentially just states that nine out of 13 states must approve it in order for it to be our US Constitution and the rest is history. Alrighty, so those are the seven articles of the constitution for you in a nutshell. Let's review. Lucas eats jalapeno steaks and Spanish rice. First article, legislative branch. Second article, executive branch. Third article, judicial branch. Fourth article, everything about the states. Fifth article, how to change the constitution with the amendment process. Sixth article is all about uh, supremacy clause. And then the seventh article is about ratification. Lucas eats jalapeno steaks and Spanish rice. Legislative, executive, judicial, states, amendment process, supremacy clause, and ratification. Simple as that. What does this do? do, 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 do. Oh, hi there. We all know that times change and technology evolves and society evolves. The Constitution is over 200 years old, and obviously there needs to be some changes that need to be made to it. There are 27 amendments, or 27 changes to the Constitution. The first 10 changes are the Bill of Rights. These are what the Anti-Federalists push for in order to ratify the Constitution. These rights honor your individual freedoms. And so we'll take a look at all Bill of Rights and all amendments right now. Take a look at these glasses, yo. Alrighty, so let's take a look at all 27 amendments or changes to the U.S. Constitution. I'm going to be showing you a quick and easy way of remembering all 27 by following this simple three-step process. So the first step would be to associate each amendment number with its corresponding letter. So the first amendment would be A because that's the first letter in the alphabet. The second amendment would be B because that's the second letter of the alphabet. You only have 26 letters, so when we get to the 27th amendment, we'll use the dollar sign as a letter, and you'll see why when we get there. The second step will be the recall, would be to recall the hint based off of the letter. And so, for example, the First Amendment, since it starts with, the first letter is A, uh, the hint will start with A. The Second Amendment, since the second letter is B, the hint will start off with B, and so on and so forth. And then, the third step is to elaborate on the hint. Some hints may be elaborated enough, and so that is the simple three-step method of remembering the amendment. So let's take a look. So let's start. Alrighty. And as I've stated before, the first ten amendments are the original Bill of Rights. These are what the Anti-Federalists push for when ratifying the Constitution. So here we go. First Amendment. A. A. Hint. All fraps. The summary. Freedom of religion, assembly, press, petition, and speech. Most people just consider the First Amendment as freedom of speech, but it actually comes with four other things. Freedom of religion, assembly, press, petition, and speech. First Amendment. A. A. All fraps. Second Amendment. B. 
Hint, B, bear arms. Summary, people have the right to carry firearms. This is, a such, this is such an open-ended amendment that it's up for interpretation. And this is a very controversial amendment in the year 2020. Third Amendment C, C, can't intrude. Troops cannot intrude your home and live there. This was a huge problem when we were the original 13 colonies. British troops would quarter your houses. And so the Third Amendment C, it's not really relevant nowadays, but troops cannot intrude your home and live there. Can't intrude. Fourth Amendment D, D, don't search. Search and seizures cannot happen without a warrant. Fifth Amendment E, E, every potential criminal's rights. When you are accused of a crime, you have the right to no self-incrimination, no double jeopardy, due process of the law, and equal protection of the law. Sixth Amendment F, F, fast trial. You have the right to a speedy trial and a lawyer, even if you can't afford one. Seventh Amendment G, G, get jury, right to a trial by jury. When all of you turn 18, you'll all be eligible for jury duty, where you get to hear cases and you get to make decisions if you get chosen within the jury pool. Eighth Amendment H, harsh punishment. No cruel or unusual punishment and no excessive bail. H, harsh punishment. Ninth Amendment I, individual rights. You have rights as a person living in this country, and those rights aren't just limited to those in the Constitution. So it's very open-ended. Alrighty, so just because it's not listed in the Constitution, that doesn't mean you don't have that right. Tenth Amendment J just states, powers that aren't listed in the Constitution belong to the states and the people. Another very controversial one. When is it, when is it time for the U.S. government, the federal government, to make decisions for the, on behalf of the entire country? Or when is it the decision of a state? And so that's what the Tenth Amendment's all about. It's a federalism amendment where it goes over who has the power, the federal government or the states when it comes to various issues. 11th Amendment K, K, kind states, an individual cannot sue a state they are not a part of. So again, for example, if there's a state law that contradicts another state's law, then you can't sue that state because you don't live there. Alrighty, because again, we are a system of federalism. Federalism is a, is a shared power between federal government and state government. States can create their own laws as long as they don't go against the US Constitution. 12th Amendment L, loser not VP. Huge amendment, huge text here as you can see, but the summary is presidential candidates get to choose their running mate. So instead of the person with the second most amount of votes being vice president, presidential candidates and vice presidential, vice presidential candidates run on the same ticket. Alrighty, 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment are known as the Reconstruction Amendments. As we stated before, this document is imperfect, and so these are the changes that were implemented after the Civil War. Alrighty, 13th Amendment, make them free. 13th Amendment ended slavery. 14th Amendment, now citizens, N. It made African American citizens. It also defines citizenship in general, and it also states that every person in this country deserves equal protection under the Equal Protection Clause. We'll learn more about this in class. 15th Amendment, oh, a silly one, but hey, it works. Oh, Obama votes. Gave African Americans the right to vote. Or did it? As you can see, sometimes our country is imperfect, and it wasn't until the Civil Rights Act where African Americans truly did have the right to vote. 16th Amendment, P, poopy income tax. No one wants to pay tax. No one likes to see all those deductions in their pay stubs. And so under the 16th Amendment, it gave the federal government the opportunity to collect income tax. 17th Amendment, Q, quick senators. It set up the direct election of senators, meaning that people now vote for the senators, not the state governments. 18th Amendment, R, rum gone. It prohibited alcohol in the USA. Also, another way to remember it, when you're 18, you cannot drink. I'll get back to that in a moment. 19th Amendment, S, suffrage for women. Women earned the right to vote, finally, 100 years ago. Right, 100 years ago was when women finally earned the right to vote. 20th Amendment T, term dates changed. The presidential and congressional term dates changed from March to January, and it also states that if the VP dies, or I'm sorry, if the president dies, the VP becomes president. 21st Amendment, what can you do when you're 21? You can drink. So 21st Amendment, you, you, undo 18th. It repealed prohibition. 22nd Amendment, V, voted in twice. As you can see, V, voted in twice, or you can remember it as 2-2. A president can only serve two terms. This was after FDR served 
a maximum of four terms after he died. Or I should say, he served four terms, there was no maximum, and after he died, we had set a two-term limit for the president. So the president can only serve for a total of eight years. Technically 10, but we'll go over that in class. 23rd Amendment, W, Washington, D.C. votes. Washington, D.C. isn't a state, and so they weren't allocated electoral votes in the presidential election. It wasn't until 1961 when they were awarded three electoral votes. 24th Amendment, X, x out the poll tax. There are no poll taxes. This was passed in 1964, and it stated that states cannot charge tax to vote. And so this was essentially um, prohibiting those who were black from voting. 25th Amendment, why you're next, you're next. It's set a presidential succession. So who becomes a president when the president dies? The vice president does. Let's say who becomes a president if the vice president dies? The Speaker of the House does. So it sets a presidential succession. 26th Amendment, Z, zombies vote. Just take a look at some of you sometimes in class. All of you are tired. So that means Z, zombies vote. The, low, the voting age was lowered from 21 to 18 in 1971. The main reason why this is is because this was during the time of the Vietnam War when 18-year-olds uh, were being drafted, and many argued, if 18-year-olds can serve in war, why can't they vote? And so that is why the voting age was lowered in 1971 from 21 to 18. Zombies vote. 27th Amendment, dollar sign, dollar dollar bill, y'all, as you young kids say. Congress cannot raise their own pay within their term. They can for the next term, though. And that was passed in 1992. All righty. So those are all 27 amendments. And hopefully you'll remember it using that method. The ABC method is what I call it. And that's that. You have concluded Constitution 101. We learned about the guiding principles. We learned about the preamble and the goals. We learned about the seven articles of the Constitution. And we learned all 27 amendments. Now in class, we'll take a look a little bit more in detail with everything related to the Constitution, and we'll learn a lot more. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, subscribe in the box. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm not a YouTuber anymore. All righty, you take care, everybody. Bye-bye.